Welcome to Peace Health Southwest. I'm Martha Sronin. I'm a member of our family birth and our education team. I am an American Heart Association certified CPR instructor teaching for the hospital, our medical staff, and you families and uh, friends of the Family Birth Center. Today our focus is going to be infant CPR. As we begin to think about infant CPR, one of the most common reasons people do not perform CPR is not the lack of knowledge, it is a fear that you're going to do something wrong. When we're in a situation where someone needs CPR, whether it is our smallest infant or grandma or grandpa, we know that Time is of the essence and performing good quality CPR is simple. There are three basic things you need to know today. I'm going to take you through each of those basic steps. We'll be using a mannequin for our example today. I would encourage you if you're watching this and you're going to be practicing along with us, a pillow, stuffed animal, or even rolled up towel can serve as your baby. We would never practice this on a child. As we prepare to practice today, I'll be using a mannequin. You might take a rolled up bath towel. If you can see, it's about the same size relative to my mannequin. The top third being the head, the center being the chest and body, and lower being baby's legs. I'm gonna set my mannequin on a firm flat surface. Maybe I've picked baby up from a bassinet, crib, cradle, or car seat, or maybe even baby was in my arms when I began to notice something wasn't right. While we'll practice CPR and put the three steps together, I'm going to begin with the first and most important step of CPR. That is going to be compressions. For compressions, I'm going to begin by identifying my compression landmark. As I look to baby's chest, I'm going to first identify the nipple line. Nipple line is going to go from side to side across the rib cage, and then I'm going to identify the center of the chest, easiest to identify from baby's chin to baby's belly button. Creating a cross going from chin to belly button, nipple to nipple across the chest, I'm going to place one of two choices. I'm either going to use the tips of my fingertips, I prefer my middle and ring finger, coming up onto the tip of my fingertip and then pressing firmly down an inch and a half and then release. The other technique is going to be to wrap my fingers and just for demonstration here, I'm gonna pick my baby up you see how my fingers are resting here at baby's back? My fingers are gonna press into the table. My thumbs are gonna to come to that same landmark just beneath the nipple line at the center of the chest, one thumb on top of the other. Again, I'm gonna press an inch and a half. Press and release, press and release. Now we're gonna begin our rhythm. Our rhythm of compressions is a hundred compressions in one minute. We're gonna keep a fast rhythm of no faster than 120 compressions per minute, and we're always going to let the chest recoil. Again, if we can imagine our heart is a sponge, I press, releasing blood, pushing it out. I release, allowing the blood to refill. Press, release, press, release. So here we go. Using my thumbs for this demonstration. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 30 compressions in a row. Whether you use fingers or thumbs is up to you, but we want to always make sure we're pushing hard and fast. Hard is an inch and a half. For an older child, toddler, you might go up to as much as two inches. For a child elementary age, age eight or older, you're gonna go two to 2.4 inches, the same we would do for an adult. So let's practice a second time. This time I'll use my fingers. Again, identifying my landmark just beneath the nipple line in the center of the chest, two fingers. I'm using two on top to create deeper and more efficient compressions. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. You want to make sure that you're not an auctioneer. Don't talk too fast. If you can't 
take a quick breath in between every couple of counts, you are counting too quickly. And you're not going to be allowing that chest to refill with blood or the recoil that happens between every compression and release. On to our second step of CPR. Compressions are the first step um, in CPR when it comes to importance. We're going to follow that with our breaths. Now our breaths are going to be a very light breath. Now many of you probably took CPR maybe back in high school, maybe for a first job. Um, we know that skills have changed and evolved over time. The importance of CPR has not changed, but technique has. An old school technique would be hands on the forehead, fingers beneath the head, uh, beneath the neck. We're not going to do that today. We're going to instead put our hand on the forehead, fingers on the chin. We're going to lift just ever so slightly. I want you to notice how little that movement was. I think about a bendy straw, the one you use for a milkshake, and how if you bend that straw too far either direction, you're going to lose efficiency. You're not going to get as much of that milkshake. I'm bringing baby's chin not quite even with nose. But I think about if I were going to lay something on baby's face, it would be relatively flat. Now, how do I give a breath? Again, old school CPR technique said, take a big breath in, exhale with a lot of force. We're not gonna practice that way because not your nor my, and especially not this baby's lungs, need that much air. Instead, let's all practice. I want you to imagine you have a match here. Single match, the candle on a birthday cake, that single cupcake. And you're gonna inhale, exhale without extra force. Nice light breath. That's how much air we wanna use for baby's lungs. You and I don't need much more. So now that we know how to give a breath, let's practice the technique. I've come from my compressions, I'm moving to breaths. Compressions will always be first, breaths will follow. I'm now going to create a seal. I'm going to create a seal with my mouth over baby's mouth, nose, or mouth and nose, whatever feels best. Leaning in. Did you see that tiny breath? I'll show it to you again. I'm going to exhale again like I'm blowing out a match. Hand on forehead, finger on chin, slight lift, and tiny breath. We want those tiny little puffs of air. For each sequence of compressions, 30 compressions, we're going to follow with two breaths. And we break our seal. You're going to see only slight, minimal chest rise in baby. And that's normal. Baby's lungs are tiny. If we blow too much air, we can cause a lung to burst. But I don't want that to stop you from doing CPR. I know my friends that are respiratory therapists say, you know what, I'd rather you do CPR and have something not go perfect, then not do CPR. Because the American Heart Association spends lots of money. They're the leading international organization. And they know that for infants, breasts are as important as compressions. Now for you and I, you might practice compression only CPR where you don't need to give breasts. That's because again, people are hesitant to give CPR because they don't want to lock lips with a stranger. This is more than likely a friend or family member when we're thinking about a baby. So our technique, hand on forehead, finger on chin, slight lift, create that seal. Two breaths, breaking the seal in between. Now we've learned both compressions and breaths, at least the technique. Let's look how it might look together. Again, we'll always start with compressions. I prefer the two thumb. It's called two thumb encircling. So I'm gonna put my fingers again at that landmark, just beneath the nipple line, and I'm gonna begin my compressions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Moving to my breast, hand on forehead, finger on chin, create that quick seal. Quickly moving back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Third time. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Now, let's sub in our towel. Just in case you're practicing at home again and you don't have my lovely mannequin, here is our head, here is our body, this is the chest, and these are our legs. My compression landmark is gonna be center of the chest, just beneath the nipple line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Coming here, remember my head tilt chin lift and I would one breath, two breath. All right, let's go to our assessment. Let's put everything we've learned together. In a normal cycle of CPR, we do start with assessment. We learn compressions first because they are the most important. And if you forgot to do your assessment and you began doing compressions and the person didn't wake up screaming, it's probably a good thing to just keep doing those compressions. On our infant, um, it is unlikely we'll have that scenario, but let's just remember that we always do our best and let's not let perfectionism or fear of doing it wrong stand from making us willing to do CPR because some CPR is better than no CPR in most situations. So let's begin. Little one, little one. Oh, come on, are you okay? Are you okay? Remember, I'm scanning from head to toe, tapping the foot, looking for a change in color. My baby may be blue, gray, or pale. They may be breathing, but poorly, with many breaks or gasps, or they may not be breathing. At this point, Hey, call 911, I'm starting CPR. I'm gonna use my thumb position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Moving to give my two breaths. Remember my head tilt chin lift technique. Two light breaths and back my second cycle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Third cycle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Fourth cycle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. My fifth cycle, I'm gonna to switch to my fingers. My thumbs are getting tired. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Moving. I've just completed five cycles of CPR. Those are 30 compressions to two breaths for each cycle. I was watching my baby during the process for any changes in color, movement, or spontaneous return of breathing. If I began to see spontaneous breathing or movement, I would pause of course, picking my baby up, offering them comfort, calling 911. If I haven't made the phone call, I'm calling to let them know that I need help. And if I have made the phone call, I'm calling to let them know that I need help. 
I need paramedics to come with their advanced skills to assess baby. Baby should be transported by ambulance to the hospital. I will never encourage, the American Heart Association does not encourage transporting a loved one, friend or family member, by car to an emergency room if an ambulance is available. I hope that these skills are never needed. We're gonna learn our skills for choking, but thank you for practicing along with me. Our final skill, but also an important and probably the most likely skill that we're gonna to learn today, well, at least most likely to be used, is gonna be our choking skills. We know that kids live in a very oral world and they put lots of things in their mouth as a means of sensing and experiencing our world. And you know, they say, kids say the darndest things, they put the darndest things in their mouth. I'm never quite sure why kids put some of the things. Um, I would never to imagine to put a cotton ball in my mouth, not in a million years, and yet I've heard some pretty great stories. So this again could be a baby in almost any situation. This could be a infant who is not yet having solid foods, or this could be a child who's very experienced at solid foods, but just like you or I, got a bit too much at one time. This technique I always feel apologetic to for especially my expectant families that are watching. This is gonna feel like a pretty abrupt procedure and I have to be honest, when you see me hitting the baby today, I'm hitting with the intent to clear an object. I am truly hitting the baby. And while that seems so wrong, it is so appropriate in this situation. To begin with, I might notice that the baby was coughing. <laughs> The cough ceases, they might become red in the face. Remember when we're talking about CPR, we're talking about blue, but this baby could be red, or if it's been enough time, they could be beginning to have blue around the lips, like that child that comes out of a pool, a little shivery. I'm gonna clasp my hand around baby's jaw. I am just holding the jaw. My hand is not going to the airway. It may look like that, but I promise it's just the jaw. I'm gonna lean my baby forward, and as I do so, I'm gonna lay their body, as you can see, on my arm. I'm gonna brace my arm with my leg. I'm gonna extend my foot out slightly so that the baby's head is lower than the rest of their body. And with my opposite hand, I'm gonna take the heel of my hand right here, just beneath the armpits, but on the upper half of the rib cage. I'm gonna take my hand and make a forward, forceful hit. I know that feels wrong, but we're gonna do that five times. One, two, three, four, five. At this point, the item has not come out. So I'm gonna take baby, holding them securely between my arm, still supporting their jaw, hand on the back of their shoulders, fingertips on the back of the skull. I'm gonna rock baby over to my opposite leg. Still head down, fingers in that position just beneath the nipple line, center of the chest. Five strong compressions. One, two, three, four, five. These are just like our chest compressions. The item hasn't come out. I'm gonna rotate the baby over. Four, five, roll and flip. One, two, three, four, five. So to demonstrate those techniques again, we begin with our hand at baby's jaw, not airway. Brace the jaw. Lean baby's body into your arm. Lean forward onto your leg, bracing your wrist on your knee with the baby's head to the floor. My opposite hand goes forward. Two, three, four, five. If the item does not come out, I very carefully flip baby over. And I exaggerate that motion so you can see it. Fingers in chest compression landmark. One, two, three, four, five. Items not out, flip them over. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna do this as many minutes as it takes for one of two things to happen. The item comes out, usually vomit by, followed by crying and vomit, or the baby becomes limp with no muscle tone. That is my clue that they need CPR directly onto my firm, flat surface and I'm gonna begin performing CPR while calling for help. I hope that these are two skills that you never need, but I'm so thankful that you've taken this time to learn along, to practice and watch. 
I would encourage you to keep the paperwork that you received as part of this class somewhere convenient. I would encourage maybe taping it onto a wall, back of a door, magnet to the refrigerator, something so that you see this continually over the next weeks and months of your baby's life. As your baby grows older and as you have a little more time, I would encourage you to find an American Heart Association certified CPR class so that you can learn the skills of CPR for anyone of any age as well as the use of an AED, Automatic External Defibrillator. Again, I will remind you that CPR for adults can be hands only, but for our infants, please remember to always give breath.